or well, this microphone's a little bit tall for me. Uh, so, there we go. So, firstly, I just want to say thank you to all of you. Uh, it's not often that I get to come and speak to a group of people that actually come to listen to me. <laughs> Certainly when I get home, my wife tells me to be quiet all the time. She's <laughs> not here to listen to me. So I just see so many faces here that are actually uh, actually keen to hear what I've got to say. Makes a welcome change. Even my staff in my own office close the door and say, Philip, please, leave us alone. Let us do our job. But I want to say, in, in all honesty, we're here to celebrate Tim Watts. And what a fantastic local member you have here. Tim? And we, when we talk about the migrant experience, and I'll talk a little bit about my family history in just a moment, uh, Tim uh, absolutely uh, lives that very living, breathing uh, point, uh, both through Tim's wife and extended family, but more importantly because of what he does and the person that he is. And uh, I wish that I had Tim as my local member from where I live, because federally, <laughs> My local member is a guy by the name of Andrew Robb. And it's actually a good point that his surname is Robb because he is robbing us blind <laughs> in the federal government as a member of the Liberal team. There's no doubt about that. And we'll talk about federal politics in a moment. And I'll do something that I probably shouldn't do as a state minister of parliament is I will talk about federal uh, politics as well because uh, we are going to have an election next year. Uh, most likely next year, could be any time, of course, but most likely next year. That will determine Australia's future. And it's a very serious issue, and I, I don't make light of it. We've seen over the last two years, this government has chosen to be federally one of the most divisive governments in modern Australian history. And every single one of us in this room are the poor of for it. A government that chooses to play politics over policy at each and every chance that they have. Just today, we saw a Victorian government initiative to basically ensure that people in the evening of each night over this weekend were able to get home safe because that's what the Victorian police were doing. It was a home safe operation. The federal government attempted to play politics with such a simple issue and try and turn it into some kind of border force operation where if all of us, including myself, walked down Swanston Street, we had the potential to be stopped and asked for our identification and a request for our visa or a request for proof of identity as to why we should be in this country. Shame. <laughs> I've never ever experienced something like that here in this country. That's today, 2015. Now my family, this is, this is why I remain so passionate about what happened today. On my mother's side of my family, they escaped Nazi Germany six months before the war began. My grandfather, was in a concentration camp from 1935. The very first camp that was built in Germany was a camp called Dachau. My grandfather was taken from my, my grandmother eight days after they were married. And for three and a half years, he was put in Dachau and a number of other camps, he was transferred. Why? Because he was Jewish. Now we all know what happened in World War II. And you all know the stories about how Jews were told to wear signs uh, on their arms, identification that they were different. And yet today, we see that the federal government was going to target everybody in this room, including myself, if we, according to their people, look different. <laughs> never before, never again. And it's up to everybody in this room, when you leave the restaurant tonight, whether you live locally with Tim, whether you work locally near Tim, to talk to people about what's going on and say that we as a community must stop. We as a community must stand up 
And we as a community must say we demand better from our elected officials. And with Tim, we have an elected official that we don't need to demand that because he gives it to us every single day. Every day that Tim Watts gets up in the morning, every day that Tim Watts goes to bed at night, he lives this in his own family. He understands the pressures that we're all under. He understands the problems that we face racially. He has a mixed family in some countries around the world that's to be celebrated. In Australia, that's always been celebrated. It's always been our way. And it's up to each and every one of us to make sure that that comes back to our way of life. Because Melbourne is a special city. Last week, I had the great pleasure of announcing on a, a radio station interview that I was doing that for the fourth year in a row, Melbourne had been voted the world's most livable city. Why? And there's a reason for that. Because we celebrate people's differences. We enjoy people's differences. And I get excited when I come to a restaurant that I've never been to before and I have one of the best Indian meals that I've ever had. <laughs> and I've had a lot of meals. <laughs> before I came in tonight, I was no bigger than Tim. <laughs> And I blame this restaurant. <laughs> Actually, this is the second time I've been to Tandoori Flames because, of course, they have a restaurant in West Footscray. And I was late tonight because I went to the Footscray uh, restaurant first. <laughs> but I didn't eat there. So I can only claim that that's from here. But the point, the point is, is that we have a fantastic multicultural city in Melbourne that we're all very proud of. And, and as... Uh, as was said, I'm a first generation Australian. My father came here because he met my mother and she convinced him that Australia offered a better way of life for him and their future together. And within, uh, well, given I'm 39 years of age, within, within though one generation, here I am standing before you as a member of parliament. These are the opportunities that Australia offer. These are the opportunities that Melbourne and Victoria offer. And these are the opportunities that we are actually able to sit back and enjoy. And so for our children, for my children, I've got three children of my own, uh, we have the opportunity to know that they have a life that is gonna be even better than the ones that we've lived. And for all of you that have chosen to make Australia your home, those opportunities are here for each and every one of you as well. But we have to guard it, we have to guard it carefully. We have to guard it jealously. And we have to make sure that every time that we get the opportunity to stand up at a community event, that we stand with each and every body that is different. So I'm not asking you to do something irresponsible. I don't want you, when, when those nasty right-wing fascist Nazis that have called themselves Reclaim Australia, I don't want any of you to go to those rallies and confront them and tell them that that's not the Australian way because putting yourselves and your lives in danger is not, is not what we're after. But having discussions with your co-workers, people that you meet, friends and family, that's how we change things. That's how we get the message out that we're all about looking after each other. And with Tim, I don't have to ask for him to do it because I know that he is. And I've known Tim a very long time. And when Tim asked me to come tonight to speak to all of you, I was absolutely thrilled. I very rarely do Friday night events because for me, Friday night is the Jewish Sabbath. And so I usually like to obviously spend it with my wife and my children and my family. But for this one, no problems. And Tim could ask me to do 52 Friday night events a year, and I would do 52 Friday night events of the year for him. <laughs> now that's the longest introduction I think I've ever given. <laughs> that said, I've only done four speeches since I've become the minister. 
So yeah, not bad out of four speeches to, to do an introduction <laughs> that probably lasts longer than most speeches should. And so I'm not going to speak for a long time, but I do wish to acknowledge a few people, and of course I've spoken about Tim for some time. Uh, Jasvinda, please stand up, Jasvinda. Jasvinda is somebody... <laughs> Jasvinda is somebody I've known, when I say for a relatively short time, for just about 18 months. But Jasvinda is somebody that I've grown to rely on immensely. His judgement, his advice, but also more importantly, his friendship. And I just, let me stop, let, let me pause for a moment on the issue of friendship. Last week, I had lunch with the Indian High Commissioner. He came down from Canberra, and uh, he and I had lunch with the uh, Consul General, and, and uh, the three of us uh, had a lovely meal. And the first thing that I said to the High Commissioner was, whilst my title may be Minister for Trade, this is what makes us different, by the way, Labor versus Liberal. Whilst my title might be Minister for Trade, I said to him, in fact, I believe that my title should be called Minister for Friendship. <laughs> because it's one thing to have an economic relationship with somebody. That's not trade. I can go into a milk bar, I can buy a litre of milk. That's not trade. Having a relationship, two-way relationship, built on friendship, that's trade. So the High Commissioner and I spent the whole time talking about working together to uh, present next year, hopefully, a new sister, a new sister state uh, relationship for Victoria. We didn't talk about trade. We didn't talk about the economics. We didn't talk about companies. We didn't talk about jobs. And that was deliberate. Because, as I said, every foundation of every relationship, and you'll know this yourself, whether you've got your own businesses, whether you work for somebody's business, any business relationship that you, you build is built on trust and friendship. So when I do relationships, when I do deals, when I make uh, decisions, it's always done within the prism of friendship. How is this going to make our friendship stronger? How is it going to make our friendship better? And Jasvinder, I thank you for your friendship as well. Now, I think if everybody doesn't know Cesar by now, then sh you shouldn't be in the room. Cesar, stand up. <laughs> this, this, this man invited me to his 50th birthday uh, only, I think, about 18 months ago. And I told him I didn't believe that he was turning 50. I, think he th I, th I thought he was saying it because he wanted a better present. <laughs> because it's a big, a big day, the 50th. But uh, I've known you for a very long time, and every time I see you, you look younger. So uh, I'm not sure what it is, but uh, I need to get the secret from you. We have uh, Rupinda from Barker College. Shelley's obviously gone. Uh, Raj uh, Sani from uh, the Telangana community. Uh, and James Keane. James, please stand up for a moment. So James, I've not met James, and I'm going to come and I'm going to come and annoy you later, James, because of course James is the chief executive of the Australia India Business Council, and that's a great relationship that I look forward to developing and working with you uh, to to ensure that your pursuits of strengthening uh, the relationship bilaterally is something that I'm working towards. So thank you for coming tonight. So the last thing that I want to talk to you about is a little bit about the portfolio as well. I've got a really exciting portfolio. It's uh, small business, innovation and trade. And I've run my own business uh, and I'm not... Can I see how many people in here run their own businesses? Hands up. Don't be shy. Great. So we've probably got about 30% of the room. So when I tell you that I know what it's like to worry about how you make your mortgage repayments, I know what it's like to get the letter from the bank saying that you're behind in your mortgage repayments. And when you worry about the idea that if you don't kill, you don't eat. Because if you don't, if you don't have trade, if you don't get money coming through the door, then you worry about, of course, how you're paying your bills. I understand that. I've lived it. I did it for two and a half years before I entered Parliament. And it was only Parliament that, of course, that, that had me have to sell my business. Because unlike Jeff Shaw and the previous Victorian government, I'm not interested in conducting 
businesses out of my electorate office uh, for private gain. So the small business portfolio is a very exciting one. It's one that I understand and I look forward to uh, supporting. But for those of you that are small business owners, one of the things that I'm concerned about, excuse me, one of the things I'm concerned about is that the Victorian government has a great deal of support for small business owners. So we, for example, run what's called a small business mentoring service. And what that does is it allows small businesses to have somebody with a clean set of eyes that have come from the corporate sector, that are in fact usually often working within the, the private sector, come into their business and have a look at the issues that the business owner is confronting. And we provide that as a service because we know that giving you the ability to have somebody provide that service and look over your business and help you and give you advice is often one that you forget or don't have the ability to undertake yourself. And so that's just one aspect. We also have a mediation service, so that if there's a dispute between you and, and another business between a contract that you've provided or they've provided to you, you can actually access that for a, a very small nominal fee. So they're just two examples out of the many uh, policies that we provide within our small business community. Last night, I had the pleasure of uh, presenting at what's called the I Awards, which is the Academy Award Night for the ICT industry, the Night of Nights. And it was a very exciting evening, and uh, I got to speak. That was my third speech. It went for a lot shorter than this one, I can assure you. <laughs> but when, when, when people are more interested in who's getting the awards, they don't want to listen to the minister, I can tell you. So I was short and sweet. But the ICT industry is a growing one. Uh, right now, we've got uh, 8,000 ICT businesses across Victoria. We're starting to really grow what is I, what I, I would regard as a significant uh, cluster uh, around the the the, uh, the industry. And in fact, I'm going to have uh, within about four to six weeks some very exciting news about a an election commitment that we made uh, leading up to the last state election, which is called the uh, Startup Initiative Fund. That's a 60 million dollar fund that we've put together to support entrepreneurs uh, and people creating businesses predominantly through the ICT sector, but not limited. So if you don't work in the ICT sector and you've got an idea for uh, uh, a new mousetrap or uh, any, anything else, thank you very much, uh, you'll be able to access that as well. And then the last one, of course, trade. I've already spoken to you a little bit about that. But just to, to give you an example, uh, our trade with India is well behind uh, uh, the US, uh, China, and Korea. And so, James, your job and my job is to increase Victoria's trade. And so we've got a big, we've got a big job to do, and I'll be leading a trade mission to India somewhere between February and April next year, and I look forward to hopefully you joining me on that as well. Will do. With, well, th and are you gonna come too? <laughs> Definitely. Brilliant, that's two. <laughs> so my, my target is to try and have 100 businesses come with me. I've got one business, and I've got one CEO of uh, the major business relationship, so we're 98 to go. So uh, give me your names and details before I leave if you're interested, and I'll sign you up too. That's enough from me though. Uh, we're here to celebrate uh, the great man that is Tim Watts. I thank you, Tim, for uh, having me tonight, and I thank all of you for listening, because as I said, when I get home later on, uh, I won't have that luxury anymore. <laughs>